Welcome to Two Red Chairs. I'm your host, Frederick Robinson. How many of you out there know exactly what to do to leverage your business on social media? I'm going to guess not that many. In fact, I'm going to surmise that the idea of needing to know what to do with social media still creates a lot of stress for you. So let's try to shed some light on the issue, shall we? Whether you own a business or are just interested in social media in general, on today's show, I'm honored to have with us Don Power. Don Power is a social media consultant and the author of Twitter for Skeptics. But Don didn't just throw up a sign and call himself a social media expert. From being the editor of Sprout Social in Chicago to working with brands like Ford and NASA on the how-to best social media practices, Don Power is very much indeed a social media consultant. So, grab your MacBook Pro, iPad Air, iPad, iPad Mini, iPhone, tablet, Kindle, Galaxy, Blackberry, Raspberry? and get ready to take some notes. And if you still haven't made it out of the Stone Age, don't worry. Just grab some paper and a pen. So come on, let's meet Don Power. Don, awesome to uh, have you on the, on the show. Great to be here. What's fascinating is how you and I actually ended up meeting in the first place. Yeah. Because it really was through Twitter, wasn't through Twitter, it? Twitter, that's right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, I remember I got a tweet, uh, well, not from you, but I saw a tweet from you, and it was a link to uh, a video that you'd done, I think, for maybe ABC Precast, if I'm not mistaken, maybe one of your, your first videos. Yes, did. yeah. And I'd heard of your name before in the context of some video production and acting and things that you've done here, but I, I didn't really know you at all, but I kind of knew a little bit about your reputation. But then when I saw the video and the quality of the video that was produced, I mean, really, I, th I think I tweeted back to you immediately to say, I haven't seen such a high quality video uh, north of, of the U.S. parallel here. In other words, I, it was really striking, the, the high quality, and I was impressed and amazed that someone local here in, in Nanaimo was producing a video of that nature. That's right. And so I, Twitter, I Twitter made it very easy for me to, to reach out to you and to, to make that relationship. And we've been done a number of projects since then, and I don't even know when that, that was, but quite a while well, ago. Well, it's, it's a yeah. while ago yeah. now. I mean, I, I know that when, when you and I first talked, I had no real interest in Twitter. I had tried it, and I think I was telling you that it was really was about, hey, I just ate a piece of toast or something like that, and <laughs> right. I wasn't getting any followers, hits, but then after we're talking with you, and you were giving me some pointers and trying to figure out, well, what would be the best way to to uh, approach Twitter, yeah. all of a sudden I was starting to see it change. I was getting more followers. I was being more interactive. Yeah. And of course, at the time, I think you'd mentioned to me that you were in the middle of, uh, of uh, writing Twitter for skeptics. That's right, and I was, yeah. Now it's a published book. So this, this is fantastic, so congratulations Thank on you. that. Thank you, yeah, too. I, I published that in uh, April of, uh, of 2013. So uh, really, it was a, quite an accomplishment, took a, took a lot of effort, but I'm really, really happy to have the, uh, the finished product, and uh, it's, been, it's been a great vehicle for me, for sure. Awesome. So uh, let me ask you this question. We're near the end of 2013 and we're moving into 2014. Yeah. Where is social media going? Well, as you know, and we talked about this before, um, I'm a social media consultant, of course, but I also write and edit a social media blog for a social media company based in the United States, uh, Sprout Social. So my job, part of my job, is to pay attention to uh, emerging trends uh, in, in the social media and marketing industries. So uh, what we see, what, what I've seen, and the industry has seen as a an emerging trend is, is, is content marketing. And what that basically means is, is that the traditional approach to advertising your business, already with the advent of social media, uh, it makes the traditional sort of advertising mechanism passe. People don't want to interact with ads, they want to interact with people. As businesses started to approach social media, they, they weren't quite sure how to make that, that leap. And so for a long time, it was still a little difficult for businesses to make that connection with their audience on social media. 
So our recommendation as social media consultants, as people who are in the industry, is to converse and chat and share compelling information. Not just about what your business does, but the things that are maybe around what your business uh, can do for people. So more lifestyle sort of uh, activities and conversations. And so really content marketing now is, is really about that. It's about showing people the bigger picture about your business, the people in it, uh, and not just your business, but what your employees do, what, what your company represents, what it can do for its clients and customers. So, so we see now a, a trend to really capitalize on things like images, video, um, and as I say, lifestyle content is, is really becoming uh, the, the trend for more and more businesses to post that type of information that's less directly linked with their business and more in general about the lifestyle around their business. So it's really not about uh, pushing you know, products to sell you. It's more just seeing what the business is about and how it operates and sort of almost like a behind the scene look at everything that goes on uh, and that's considered the content that you should be producing. That's absolutely right and there's a wonderful example that's happening right now with Coca-Cola and their corporate website now is changed from a from a repository of all their information about Coke and advertising around Coke, what you would typically think of a corporate website. And they've made it much more into a, a lifestyle branded page. So if you go to coca-cola.com or you go to their, their corporate website, what you're going to see is something that looks more like an entertainment magazine or a lifestyle magazine, which, which reiterates their brand. They're all, they've been about lifestyle you know, forever. But what you're seeing more of is now that they're, they're just as likely to, uh, to have articles on, uh, on fashion uh, or recreation as they are about, you know, buy Coke or Coke refreshes. The interesting thing for, for small business or big business, right, but, but I think I reiterate this for small businesses as well, the same things that apply for Coke will apply for small business. The beauty is you don't need the budget of Coke. Coke has done the grunt work for us right. all in this industry and for you as a small business owner, they've pumped in the best you know, marketing money, uh, best marketers that money can buy to determine that lifestyle marketing, content marketing is really the wave of the future and trying to get people to buy your product by hammering them over the head with buy product advertising messages is, uh, is really not that effective anymore and so they're, they're taking a much different approach. And as I say, they, they research this. They don't do it. They don't turn on a dime and say, oh, we'll try this. They've researched this. They've spent the money. And they're just embarking upon it. This is, this is new. So it's, it's just as viable and accessible for a small business to get into content marketing as it, as it is for, for Coca-Cola. You just need to think more and more now about what type of content you're going to post and, and where do we post it and, and how do we make it approachable and accessible as opposed to just yet another advertising message. Well, on, on that basis then, here's a question for you, because I know a friend of mine who has a business, she'd been posting stuff on Facebook, but recently she started posting somebody that she knew in social media or was somebody to do with LinkedIn, right. and she was saying, I don't understand it. I'm posting all these different things on my Facebook page, but it's not showing up in feeds, and she's wondering if she's doing something wrong. Right. So if, if we're supposed to be posting more content, right. if her concern is that it's not being seen, how are we supposed to be posting that content? Well, yeah, that's, that's an astute uh, observation, and you're quite right. I mean, some businesses and individuals have already approach, approached the idea of content marketing and gone to Facebook to uh, promote their business with pictures and images, and that's great. That's a, that's a great start, and for, for a while that was working quite well. But now Facebook, really largely driven, you know, no surprise, they, they went public uh, and, and, and they're under uh, pressure to, to monetize their business. Uh, but now with an algorithm change on the content, uh, it's making it very difficult for anyone's content to actually be seen organically, i.e. without paying a fee to promote your posts. It's very unlikely that those posts are going to be seen by anyone, whether you're posting viable, valuable, interesting content or not. So, so what do you mean by an algorithm change? Like what, what are... So Facebook will actually limit what you see. Just because you post something doesn't mean that your f people, your friends are going to see it in their feeds. And as a business page, just because you post information on your business page, it actually doesn't mean that the people who've liked your page will see that content. Facebook has a program, an algorithm, that will actually filter out the content and only show information that it deems to be um, newsworthy, if you will, 
view worthy and that tends to be uh, content that has been shared, commented on um, and basically where, where there's a lot of activity around those posts and most businesses and individuals too are having difficulty creating content that's compelling enough that will actually make it to the top of that algorithm. And so okay. Facebook really has done that by design because now they offer you, they say, well, if you want your th content, that great picture of you and your staff on the ski vacation to be seen by your friends and followers, uh, then you need to pay us. And if you do, then your content will rise to the top. So, you know, again, no one can fault Facebook for, for trying to, to make money. Uh, it just makes it very difficult for uh, a business, particularly small businesses, who don't necessarily have the, the, the budgets or even the know-how of how to basically make their content into advertising. And it, it, they've made it really difficult, I think, for particularly for small businesses to really make the platform effective for their content. So at, the, at this point then, you know for a fact that if a business is wanting to promote stuff on Facebook, they actually are eventually going to have to pay for that content? Is that what you're, you're saying? It's, it's almost to that level now. I mean, no one's saying you have to pay. It's just uh, the latest statistics uh, that I've seen um, from a, a major search engine company uh, use statistics uh, as 1% of your content that you post will be seen by your friends or fans without paying for it. So if you're comfortable with your, your efforts uh, being seen by one in a hundred people will see a post that you make, then you don't have to pay for it. But obviously that type of uh, conversion is not going to be very effective in a business context for most businesses. So really you're sort of, your hand is forced to, to pay for content, pay for your content to be seen. And if okay. you don't, it won't. For me, I'm a, I'm a business owner, and of yeah. course I produce videos for business. Yeah. There's a lot of business owners out there that when it comes to paying for advertising, specifically let's say Facebook at the moment, yeah. you know that the rates that, that might, be, might be charged are going to be generic for all, but it's not going to take into account that you know if you're a small business or you're a large business, you're yeah. all going to have to end up paying the same thing. Now I know for me, I think I would find it very difficult to all of a sudden have to get into a market where I'm having to pay a, a, you know, a large amount to advertise on Facebook when even now yeah. I'm not really sure it's been that beneficial for me as That's a right. business to post on Facebook. That's right. So what are the, what are the alternatives? What, what should we as, a biz, as business owners do for promoting our business yeah. if we're not going to be using Facebook? Well, I think there are lots of other alternatives, lots of other viable platforms that are attracting a lot of attention and eyeballs, two of which that are immensely popular and growing in popularity are Twitter and, uh, and YouTube. Okay. Uh, Twitter is immensely popular with, uh, with a subsection of, of people, two, three hundred million uh, users, depending on, on which numbers uh, you, know, you, you look at. Certainly not the billion or more that uh, Facebook has. But you, you can pay for advertising on options to have your, your content uh, promoted on Twitter, but it doesn't cost you to, to have your information seen. Basically, when you post, you know, your followers that they're following, you can see that information. It's not filtered out by, by Twitter. They've just done an IPO as well, so perhaps they'll head in the same direction. But right now, you, know, you post content, it gets seen. Another interesting feature that Twitter's just enabled really recently is having the ability for pictures to show up right in the tweet stream without having to click through a link to see the picture somewhere else. So now the content that perhaps you were posting your pictures of your ski vacation or your staff uh, party or maybe something that your staff is doing at a, uh, after hours or at a, a volunteer organization that you once used that on Facebook, now you can put that in your Twitter stream and upload it as a picture and it'll show up as a picture right in your Twitter stream. So it's, 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 it stands out, it's very compelling and uh, the numbers and statistics show that uh, tweets with images in them get retweeted more, they generate more uh, click-throughs on, on links to your website. So that's, that's one avenue that I think can be a viable means for content distribution or content marketing. Well, I have to admit for Twitter, I, I'm starting to put more photos into my posts because when you actually go yep. to a stream, anybody's stream on Twitter, if it's just a, a list of, of just text-based content, yep. you don't, you know, you might read them, but there's, there, 
it's not visual, it's not, it's right. not an experience. Whereas if you're seeing a lot more feeds of, of video or photos in that same stream, you actually might start scrolling through it because you're kind of interested to see what they're, what they're posting. That's right. If it's just text, you're, you, you tend to pass on it. That's right. And so again, they're really embracing, Twitter is really embracing this, this trend towards content marketing and, and that is the way to get people's attention, not by advertising, but by having compelling content that still reiterates your brand, has something to do with your brand, um, but believe it or not, you know, sometimes uh, just, just tweeting content or posting content somewhere on a platform, social media platform, that's just fun. That just, you know, as we all know, the, the, the cats riding the, the, the remote control cars or playing the piano. Yeah, I'm yeah. not necessarily saying your business needs to do that, but it's fun and funny content and people love to, uh, to push around that and, and, and share that type of content. Now maybe your business can be a little savvy and create some funny or humorous uh, content of its own or compelling content, interesting. Sometimes it can be content that tugs on the heartstrings. And uh, as we've seen, the other mechanism now, of course, uh, uh, that's already popular but still growing in popular popularity is, is, is video and YouTube being the, the, the distribution channel that's the most popular uh, for video. We watched uh, just now the WestJet video where they, uh, you know, basically had a campaign, a viral campaign where they bought presents for for people boarding a plane. We just watched that, we did. and I mean, <laughs> I, literally, I teared up. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm a softie, yeah. but that it tugs at the heartstrings. It doesn't once say, "Buy your ticket at WestJet," no, or "We're having a seat sale from Vancouver to Toronto." It's not about that at all, but man, I can tell you that when you look at that, I mean, you almost want to go and buy a ticket, even if you weren't going to fly, yeah. just to support the company for being who they are. And I mean, that video allows that to be so plain and clear, and yet it's not advertising, no. right? It's, it's, it's compelling content. It's content marketing done well. So yes, we don't always, not all of us have the luxury of having the budgets of Coca-Cola or WestJet. But again, they're, they're teaching us how to do it. They're, they're providing a template and a model that works. Yes. And we know it works because we can look and see that that's been shared now millions of times. And how many people are talking about it now, talking about the brand. And it, it works. So a small business can take that as a template and take this as an opportunity to say, you know what, the money we used to pay, pay to create traditional advertising, maybe it works for us, probably it's not working like it used to. They can take some of those advertising marketing dollars now and create compelling content, find people who can if they can't. Uh, and that is now, it, it is the way that business is done right now. And so if you're in business, I mean, Gary Vaynerchuk, uh, not everyone will, will know who that is, of course, but in the, in the marketing industry, he's, he's one of the top names now. And he advises, you know, Fortune 500 companies. But he also does grassroots marketing, and will will advise uh, small businesses that he sees on Twitter asking for help. But his his shtick is now and has been for a long time that businesses are now media companies. We're all in competition, not to sell our products, yeah. but to attract eyeballs. Once you attract attention, that's when people will pay attention to your message. But first, you have to get their attention. And as we all know, it's a competitive world out there right now and a noisy world to grab people's attention. And you can imagine any given person who's on the internet right now, are they going to spend their couple of minutes watching a video clip of, of a heart-wrenching, feel-good video from WestJet playing Santa Claus for their, for their uh, flyers? Or are they going to watch an ad from your business that's telling them how great your widget is and you know, right. they can buy it for $39.99? I mean, it's, it, it's just... A, it's, it's not compelling enough to grab people's attention when there is so much other compelling at attention on some of these other platforms. So, Well, I know, like, for me, I know that the videos that I produce, I, I'm trying to stay away from actually selling any of the yeah. products. I, I'm more into the story. And I think yeah. just like with, on a much smaller scale, but, uh, you know, in comparison with Jet, is Jeff definitely pulling on the heartstrings. Yeah. The, the idea is to really get behind the people that are doing these businesses and sort of find out more about their the philosophies and, right. and everything else so that you actually care about the people that you're working, you know, you're doing business Absolutely. with. Absolutely. You it have stands to care. Out. Yeah. And I mean, even the video that you did for me as an example, I mean, I'm in my kitchen making tea and I got all my kids' pictures posted to the fridge. It looks like a mess, but that, that's me. That's, that's part of my life of what I do. And, yeah. and I work from a home office. And so I was happy to have that, you know, authentic sort of imagery. 
But more to the point, then you followed me with the camera pan and went into my living room where I was sitting down and I had a stack of business books that I'd happened to be, uh, to be reading. Yeah. And uh, one of the business books at the top of the stack, uh, How to Blog a Book, was seen by the author. And so when she saw that, she was impressed that, <laughs> that I had happened to be reading her book. And we, we hit it off, had a, a conversation happening on Twitter. And uh, now she's offered me to, uh, to write a blog on her blog and expose me and my process of writing the Twitter for Skeptics book to a completely different and bigger audience than I would have had. And all, again, from this idea of getting to know someone, seeing someone's slice of life. Yeah. And yet there's a tangible business element in there that goes with it but all done through this sort of lifestyle marketing as opposed to I'm Don Power, a social media consultant, buy my stuff, or I'm an author of a book, buy my book. Wasn't that at all. It was this lifestyle catch that, you know, two different entities had this personal connection that's now led to a business benefit for both of us, and it's great. Yeah. yeah, fantastic. So I guess as a sort of a final question then, knowing about all of these social media channels, and I know a lot of businesses, they end up asking me as well, yep. what on earth do I do with it when it's done? So in other yep. words, if they've if they have to be on all these social media channels, if yep. they've got a video created for, for their business, what do they do with it? Right. Overall, what is like the, the major piece of advice that you could give everyone to really explain to them or let them know what do they do with this content? Well, I, I, a piece of advice, a succinct piece of advice that I give everyone on social media marketing is be interesting. Okay. And it's one of those tenets that, yeah, it, it probably sounds a lot easier. Um, it, you know, you say it a lot easier than actually implementing it. But really, you have to be interesting. So your content has to be interesting. And how you promote it and distribute it has to be interesting. You can create the greatest content in the world, but if you promote it in an advertising way that turns people off, they're, they're never going to see your content. Or if you don't promote it at all, people aren't going to see your content. Okay. So you really, you know, but, but the wonderful part is, is that social media now is probably among the best means to promote content. And in, in, in large measure, it's free. I mean, we talked about some of those uh, venues where you have to pay or pay a premium to get your content seen, but that's certainly not every channel. I mean, uh, Twitter is still free, YouTube is still free, and video is a, is a really compelling uh, medium right now that's still growing. I mean, we looked at a statistic recently where it said uh, over 50% of all the internet traffic in the world is going to be video in 2016. Wow. I'd be surprised if it's going to take that long, quite honestly. Uh, with the proliferation now of, of smartphone video as well. I, th I think that it'll be, it'll be over 50% traffic before 2016, well, but, but video-based. Even Google has changed in terms of how it searches for things. Before, it was, it was searching a lot more for text, but in actual fact, video comes up more than, than text for searches, does it not? Isn't that... Well, I mean, Google is always changing its algorithms. It's a moving target by design. They don't want people to try to figure it out and game it. But they've gone on record recently, and again, one of these uh, reputable search engine companies that we've talked about and, and blogs have, have written about it recently. Um, and they've said that uh, the Google update, it's called Hummingbird. It was in September of 2013 when they did a major change of how they index pages and how search results are, are found. And Google itself says that the best search engine optimization, the best way to get your content found is to have high quality content. And some of the best quality content that we have, as we've seen is compelling video because it's easy to digest. It's very easy to get the point across um, and it's, it can tug your heartstrings. So Google definitely pays attention to, uh, to video. And again, there's, there's, myriad ways that you can format your video and, 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 uh, and tag it so that Google knows exactly what the content is. Uh, and whether you're doing that for video or whether you're doing that for, for a blog post or even a tweet, okay. uh, there are ways that you can sort of format that content to get it found and to get people sharing it and to get people interested in it and then that will ultimately translate an interest in you and your business. It, it really, it, it does work. It's phenomenal. Well, Don, thank you very much for coming on the thank show. Thank you, my pleasure. I encourage everyone out there to pick up Don's book, Twitter for Skeptics. Again, thank That's you. That's great, thank very, you very much yeah, for being on the show. Thanks a lot.